here's a fun new game. It's kind of like Mastermind, if you remember that. You're trying to guess a word, and the program will show you which letters that you have that exist and are in the right place, and exist but are in the wrong place. So, I type in a word, hit enter, tells me, aha, uh -huh, the R and the T are in the word, but not in these positions. So then I could try, you know, something else. And now we know we have an E in it, but none of these letters are in the right place. And uh, on we go. But I want to show you how I wrote a little program like this one in Python. When you play it, it looks like this. Oh, I have it telling me what the word actually is here. So I'll pretend I don't know what that is. Um, okay, well, that's nice. I happen to guess... <laughs> well, <laughs> who knows if I guessed it or if I subconsciously remembered the value. But um, the A and the E are in the right spot. And then let's say we do... Um, that. So what did that do? It didn't get the L in the right spot. Um, I think you see the idea here. Let's just go ahead with the word. All right, why don't we step through the code? What do we want to uh, look at here? All right, so we've got a call to play. Here's play. We got three nested functions. And then here we're reading the words from a file. So we have two files, one with some common words and one with lots more words. We read them from a file. Here's the function to read the words from a file. Um, there can be a comment character in column one on the, on the first line or anywhere, and this will ignore those. And it has an optional, um, there's a keyword argument here for a word length. And for this use, we only want words that are five letters long. Okay, back to here. So um, let's just put a breakpoint here and I'll show you what we've got so far. So we've filled in common words and many words. Common words is, um, f there are 483 of them, and here are some. And the many words, there are 4,266 of them, and here are some of them. Okay, now the program will randomly choose one of the common words to be the word that we're going to use. So the word is music. Shh, the word is music. There was a show on TV decades ago, I think it was called Concentration, maybe? And the, the game producers would quietly tell the audience what the answer was so that we could know while the people on TV played along. Now we have a variable for where the answer that's typed in goes, and that's set to none. And then we have two sets that keep track of the hits and the misses. And then the loop continues while the answer doesn't match the word. And now we'll call getValidAnswer, which is one of these methods above. The job of getValidAnswer is to prompt you, get your answer, and if it's invalid, tell you and then loop and do it again. Well, let's go in here. So the answer is none, so this condition is true. And now we're going to produce the prompt that we're going to use with input on the next line. And to build the prompt, we're going to call colored alphabet. So here's colored alphabet. And this is to return a string of the letters of the alphabet colored by hit, miss, or unknown. So we're here, and we're going to now call um, a nested function, color and care, or char if you prefer, for an ASCII code. 
uh, for all ASCII codes in the range small a to z. So let's go in. Here we are, color and char. So the ASCII code is 97. That's the letter A. And now we need to set the color depending on whether A exists in hits or misses. And um, those are empty. So that's not going to be true. That's not going to be true. So it's going to set the color to light black. And then it's going to return that color. So it's an ANSI escape code. This is what it looks like. It's going to return that joined with the character, which is an A. So that's going to make a, a gray A. Okay, we return back to here where we've got this. Um, is it a list comprehension or it's a generator expression with join going? So let me return from here. And that gets us back to here. And now we've built the prompt. So the prompt looks like this, a color and an A, a color and a B, a color and a C, a color and a D. Um, so that's what it looks like with the ANSI escape codes embedded. And now we'll call input. So now you see that the, that, that prompt is just sort of these gray letters and then a space where I can type in something. So I'll type uh, my answer. I'll just say below. So there's my response. And now we want to make sure that the length of the response is correct and that the word I typed is in the larger set of words. And this, this response is valid. So we set the answer to the response and we return. So now we have our answer, which is below. And now we want to show the pattern of where things are matching. So let's go into here. So we have word and answer. The word is music. This is the one we're trying to guess, and our guess was below. So we're going to zip the two sequences together so that we're able to retrieve uh, the pairs of letters. So the B and the M, the E and the U, and so on. So let's go into this. So now we've got the, the, the B and the M, the B from below and the M from music. And now what we want to do is determine whether this is a hit or a miss. So is answer letter in word? Well, answer letter is B. Is it in word? No. So B is a miss. So it's going to get recorded as a miss. Now how does that work? Well, answer letter in word is a condition that returns a boolean, a true or false value. This is going to return false. And then because it's used inside the square brackets here as an index into this list, it's turned into an integer, a zero for false. So misses cause us to call the add method on the misses set. So this is now going to add this answer letter, which is a B, to the misses set. So watch down here when I advance. So the missus now has a B in it. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to, for each of the five letters in, in both words, we need to um, figure out how to, how to depict it. Should we show the letter as uh, green if it matches, or yellow if it is not in the right place but it is in the word, or if it's not in the word at all, then we'll just show an asterisk. So let's see what we get. What are we expecting first? Um, so the word letter is not the same as the answer letter. And it's a miss, so it's going to be a, an asterisk. Display color is this, which I'm thinking is probably the, the white. Yes. And then the display character is the splat or asterisk. And then we're going to print these. So that appears. This first splat appeared. And then um, we'll go on and do another one. That's another splat. So is there any overlap at all between these two words? 
Looks like no. But we do know that um, five of these letters are not in the word. So let's go around again. And now look, all the letters we've chosen that are not in the word are color coded as red. So the word is music. Um, music. Muses. Shows as the first three letters match. Fourth letter doesn't match. Final letter is there. It's just not in the right place. So let's just finish by saying this. And then the program stops. The code is on GitHub. I have a link in the description. See you next time.